Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in this series of very slow detailed cooking lessons. Um, today we're making shepherd's pie. Let me show you some of the things I have out here. Um, I have a large pot with some water in it which I already turned on to start boiling. So this doesn't have to be another 40 minute video like the last one. I have this skillet, which I can cook in, but can also go in the oven. This is a very fancy item. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. You will need a regular frying pan and then like a casserole dish or a baking dish. I have some potatoes, which I've peeled and cut up. I'll demo one for you guys in a minute. I have carrots, two large carrots, which I've washed. A cutting board, a knife, a potato masher, fork, peeler, tablespoon, teaspoon, large mixing spoon, measuring cup. I have a cup and a half of peas that were frozen and a cup and a half of frozen corn. I have about a quarter of a stick of butter, all cut up into cubes. Um, that's four tablespoons. And I have about a third of a cup of milk. This is if we need it in the mashed potatoes. There's some garlic powder, some sage, some salt, some pepper. And here's some beef broth. And I need to get the ground meat out of the fridge because that's important. Here we go. And I've got some ground meat. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is start cooking the potatoes because those are going to take a little while. So, you know, you wash all your potatoes and then you're going to peel them all around like this and you're going to chop them into uh, cubes about an inch you know they don't have to be exactly square and they don't have to be exactly an inch but somewhere around there I'm going to put these potatoes in the water. Like that. Um, that's a lot of water. Maybe a little bit too much. So I'm going to take some out. You can just dip a cup with a handle in and just get some water out of there if it's too much. Oh no, I got some potatoes. There we go. Now, um, I want to get my carrots ready. So I peeled one already. I'm going to peel another one. So those potatoes are going to take about 10 minutes once they come to a boil. The way that you test if they're done is you take a fork and you stick it in a potato, like the biggest, fattest potato in there. And if it falls off the fork, then you know it's done and it's ready to be mashed. So these carrots, we really want them to cook and to be soft. So I'm going to cut off the top and then I'm going to cut them pretty thin. Um, again, 
This is the proper way to hold a knife is by holding the blade between your pointer finger and your thumb and having your three fingers wrap around here. Uh, this is actually the safest way to hold the knife also. I know that a lot of people like to hold a knife like this, but it's a little floppy. Look how much more control I have from holding it like that. So, and keep slicing the carrot. you guys a little secret and that is that I don't like carrots but the rest of my family does and my kids do so um, you know they're really good for you so I'll use carrots not even my kids know that I don't like carrots that's how big a secret it is this carrot was kind of fat so I cut it in half. Later, we'll use the measuring cup to measure the beef broth. Okay, there we go. Get rid of these little vegetables first. Actually, I think, yeah, we'll get rid of them. Okay, now we're going to start making the base for the shepherd's pie. That's the part that goes on the bottom. I'm going to put about two tablespoons of olive oil in there. You can measure it out with your spoon or you can just guess. That's up to you. the onion so I can chop it up into very tiny pieces and put it inside of this pan. With shepherd's pie you kind of want you want to be able to get everything in one bite like in one forkful so if you chop up all your things pretty small they'll cook evenly and they'll all get combined into the base it'll be all saucy and delicious with the mashed potatoes on top. So I'm going to turn this on now. And whatever I'm using here, whatever I'm adding, if you don't like something, you can just leave it out or you can substitute something else. Like you don't like corn or peas or carrots or onions or whatever, just, you know, use whatever you want. Just make sure you chop it into tiny pieces. Cauliflower would be good. Anything really. Brussels sprouts, broccoli, 
peppers. That would be good. Turning up the potatoes, they're not even boiling yet. Let's get a move on potatoes. So, there we go. Now we're waiting for this to cook. While I'm waiting for my onions to get going, I can sprinkle these spices on it. Now, again, I know some people are not into sage. That can be a strong flavor. Mm. You don't have to use it. If you want, you can substitute something else like oregano or basil or thyme. Oh, thyme would be really good. Um, or you can just not have any herbs at all. Grr, having a lot of difficulty with this. I'm gonna need a scissor. My goodness, that's rough. All right, this is starting to sizzle a little, that's good. Gonna, so I like a lot of garlic. Normally, I would probably use fresh garlic, but I'm trying to do this as simply and as quickly as possible. So, there we go. Now I'm gonna put in some pepper. My little girl who loves sage so much that she will pick it and eat it raw all day. Just plain sage. She loves it. So, put in a good amount there. So, what you're going to do is you're going to fry these onions so they start looking translucent. They're all fried. I'm going to add in this ground beef. They're getting there. This doesn't take too long. Alright. One thing I'm, I'm going to do now is turn on my oven. So that when this is ready to go in, I can just pop it in the oven. I'm going to put it at 350. It's a good temperature for everything all the time, more or less. Good. Gonna dump this in there. Boom. Get that paper off. And now I'm gonna break it up. Like that. I'll use my spatula. So if you don't want to have this one giant hunk of ground beef, that one be good. Cook 
this felt almost completely flipped through. Like if it has a teeny bit of pink in it, that's okay. But more or less just all cut. There we go. The kid is going now. Hopefully they'll be ready soon. By the time this is done, anyway. If I mentioned this, I might have. It's half a cup of peas, frozen peas, and a cup. It's a cup and a half of frozen peas and a cup and a half of frozen corn. So mix all that up. Right, I've gone in there. Ooh, fancy. So now, let's see, let's add some of this. I'm gonna add, I don't know, about half a cup for now. I can always add more if I feel like it's getting dry. And it's gonna be broth. And I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. Or less, half a teaspoon. Don't want it too salty. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. So this still needs to cook a little longer. The carrots are still firm and there's still a bit of pink. So I'm just gonna let this hang out for a minute. And while that's still cooking, I'm gonna come over here and look at these potatoes. Hi, potatoes. Hmm. Trying to get a fat one. All right. So, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to poke this potato. Ooh. It looks like it's just about done. All right. That's great. Okay. So, I'm going to clean up these things a bit. And um, throw these away. And get out my colander and drain the potatoes. All in 
blender in the sink. Oven mitt, because that pot is probably hot. Maybe I'll give this a little stir. Ooh, looking good. Mm, also smelling really nice. That means the oven's preheated, which is great. Turning the potatoes off. Just being super careful with this. Boiling water is hot. Now I'm going to take these potatoes and return them to the pan. Get in there. Now mashed potatoes, I mean, the more butter you put in, the better they will taste. And that's just a fact of life. But it's also true that the more butter you put in, the more unhealthy they'll be. So that's up to you. You can put in a bit less butter, have them be, you know, a little healthier or a little more butter. I'm going to start with about half the amount of milk that I have here. Um, and then if I need more, I can always add more. And salt. I'm going to put in about half a teaspoon. And again, if I need more, I'll add more. There we go. I have this potato masher. This is my favorite kind. They sell fancier ones. This one works great for me. So you're just gonna take it and mash your potatoes up. You can be very aggressive with them. They don't mind. I actually normally like to have my husband do the potato mashing, but Busy. Just keep mushing them until you've mashed every single potato a lot. The mashier the better. Also, if you want, you can add pepper to this, these potatoes, um, that's up to you. Alright, these are good. looking pretty pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna need the extra milk. Okay. I'm gonna give this a little stir. Going crazy over here. Cooking, cooking. There's plenty of broth in there. It doesn't look like I need to add any more right now. Okay. Oh, 
gotta keep cooking while I finish up these potatoes. are a teeny bit lumpy. If you want them super smooth, you have to use an electric mixer. Um, you can use a stand mix mixer like KitchenAid or you can use beaters. But, you know, I don't mind them a little, a little lumpy. So I'm just going to go with it. I also want to taste a tiny bit. Not too shabby. All right. The salt is good. Butter is good. Mm. Delicious. I'm giving them a bit more mashing. settle down before I put these mashed potatoes on top of it. Now, again, if you don't have the kind of skillet that can go right in the oven, like a cast iron pan or something like this, that's fine. At this point, you want to take this mixture and transfer it to a casserole dish or a dish like this, and then put your mashed potatoes on top of that. I'm just going to use the pan that I cooked in. So, I'm going to take these potatoes, I'm going to drop them in spoonfuls all around the top. Just like this. gotten them all on top there. You'll just spread them around with the back of your spoon like this. So it covers the whole thing. Now's the time. And if you want to, you can get fancy. This is what the fork is for. You just take your fork and you can make a pattern. Kind of like, you know, one of those Japanese rock gardens. You can just rake around there. Make a nice border. You can do whatever you want. It's up to you. You can do stripes like plaid. I think I'm going to make a nice circular pattern. Good. That's kind of fun. So, I'm sure you guys have noticed um, my video editing skills are not great. So, you will not get to see what this looks like when it comes out of the oven. Uh, now that I have a swirly swirl, I'm going to use my oven mitts to put it in the oven. And 
warm in there. And it'll be ready in about 40 minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna set it for 35. And then I'm gonna check it. And the way it should look when it's all ready is it'll be a teeny bit brown on top where those peaks are from where we made the fork pattern should be a little brownish and then you know it's ready so set your timer take it out when it's done and enjoy your meal of course if you've watched this whole video and you think it's awesome because i'm sure you do uh you can press subscribe i like subscribers that's fun and um I think next episode I'll be making either fried rice or meatballs. Not sure yet. Uh, anyway, I'll see you soon. Have a good day.